with Allah's permission, with Allah's tawfiq, I want to remind myself and to all of you regarding one inevitable aspect of human life and that is masaib, calamities, hardships, difficulties in life. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book has made it very clear for all the humanity that these masaib, these calamities, these hardships, these are part and parcel of this life. This is the nature of this abode, this dunya. One of the names our ulama, they call this dunya Darul Bala. It is a place of test, which it is indeed. It is Darul Ibtila, Masaib, calamities, hardships, they are necessary part of human life. If there was any human being who could have been spared from this, they would have been the prophets of Allah. But what we see, they are tested the most, not only in the matter of their dawah, but in all aspects of human life as well, with regard to their families, for example. Now, if this is the reality, that this is inescapable, it is going to happen. The actual thing is, is there any meanings? Is there any purpose? Is there any reason for these hardships and for these masaib and for these calamities? Because there are two types of sufferings. from the perspective of how we look at them. The sufferings for which we know the meanings, which we can give them the meanings. And those sufferings which human beings cannot give any meanings, they, they appear to be meaningless. So it's not the coming of these hardships which make our lives miserable, no. It is when we are not able to give them some meanings. When we are struggling to understand their purpose. That is when human beings of people living faith, that when they cannot give meanings to their sufferings. Now, inshallah, very quickly, I just want to mention three or four points. That when we go through because it is inevitable, it will happen, it may be happening right now to many, one, many of us. First and foremost, whenever anything of this nature happens to any one of us, immediately remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are many ways of remembering Him. First of all, have this conscious awareness, remind yourself, remind yourself that whatever has happened, it has happened with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who is Allah? He is the one who loves me more than my mother. It will change your whole perspective. Apparently, on the surface, it may be some human being who is causing you some pain. It may be a disease, anything, but this is on the surface. But a believer has to look beyond that. And what is beyond that? This reality, that this calamity, this musiba, this financial hardship, this family problem, it would not have happened if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not allow it to happen. And who is Allah? He wants good for me. 
asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khairul lakum perhaps there are things which you dislike but they are good for you why wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun look look how quran is giving us the philosophy of life so that is the first thing that it has happened with allah's permission and he is fully aware please understand this point allah is fully aware of my pain just this mere realization that allah knows my pain maybe no one else knows my pain in this dunya no human being but there is one who knows the pain i'm going i'm going through and he is fully capable of changing my condition in a blink of an eye this should be the first immediate response in in the heart of a believer whenever something of this nature happens and then we have been taught that immediately what should we say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa khluf li khayran minha this is the way of a believer what we should say o oh allah to you we belong and to we, to you we are going to return and then allahumma ajurni fi musibati o oh allah give me ajr in this musiba in this calamity wa khluf li khayran minha and then give me after this better than this we all know the famous story of our mother of the believer umm salama radhiyallahu ta'ala anha when she lost her husband and her husband was very loving and caring for her she was in this pain but she knew this dua she said that i was making this dua but at the same time i was thinking in my heart as a human being that what could be better than abu salama he was such a loving and caring husband and then we all know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her the husband the best human being our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam look how he how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure her pain dear brothers and sisters as a believer all we have is our allah if we are not connected with him where else would you go because matter of a believer is different than a disbeliever remember this point because this dunya is signal mu'min and jannatul kafir this dunya is a place of enjoyment for who for a disbeliever but for a believer it's like a prison the moment of death is as though as someone has announced that you have been released and now from now onward there is no more hardships no more calamities it's all everlasting bliss and this is the reason look in the quran when the when the believers as soon as they will enter into jannah what they going to say alhamdulillah allazi azhaba annal hazan look at this ayah look at the part of this ayah that all praise to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has removed from us our hazan our hum our grief our sadness in this ayah allah subhanahu is, is, is teaching us that they are and they are people of jannah but they were having hazan they were having sadness they were having grief in this dunya and the end of grief is not in this dunya in this dunya we can only give meanings to our hardships we cannot escape them we have to remember the nature of this dunya always second point what is the utmost goal of a believer allah's pleasure and his jannah that is what believers are looking up to 
and what is the obstacle what could be the potential obstacle in this our sins our sins okay now we know that any hardships even pricking of a thorn to a believer such a small thing any hardships any calamity which comes to a believer it causes the forgiveness of our sins which means it comes to remove the obstacles and it it paves the way of us to enter into jannah if we look at these hardships from this perspective that they are there to pave my way to jannah we will never be despair it does not mean remember this it does not mean that we ask for the calamities no we have to ask for afia for the good in this dunya but these things will come let me give you the summary of a very profound hadith on this topic very profound you know on the day of judgment a person or you can say a category of people will come and they have suffered in this dunya the most they did not see any good in this dunya just imagine the level of suffering throughout their life they have sickness they have family problem they have this hardship that hardship but in the midst of all of that they have allah has given them istiqama allah has granted them sabr the sabrun jameel beautiful sabr so they made their way to jannah now look at this before they are entered into jannah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the angel that take this person and give him one dip in jannah and that bring him back so the angel now remember this person he suffered throughout his life or her life so when the angels will take him and will give him one dip into jannah will bring him back allah will ask this person now please pay attention allah will ask this person did you ever see any hardship he would say love allah i never saw any hardship in my life look one dip of jannah will make us forget life long suffering of this dunya this is the prize which allah subhanahu wa taala can facilitate for us through these hardships because remember this sometime and it is from the it is from the authentic hadith that sometime a believer is not able to achieve a station a level in jannah which allah wants to give him so sometime a believer is not able to achieve a level in jannah a high level in jannah which allah wants to give him or her allah subhanahu wa taala puts the person into hardships and then give him the tawfiq for sabr for istiqama and as a result of that he is able to achieve those station in jannah which he or she could not have achieved through their actions all of this is for what it is to give meanings that whatever we are going to go through it is not meaningless it is not just something happening randomly it is part of allah's bigger plan may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us trust in allah's plan ameen wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik alhamdulillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah amma ba'd dear brothers and sisters sometime when hardships masaid comes some of us we think maybe you know it's allah allah is punishing me 
I'm a wrong person. I'm doing something bad. Let me tell you the opposite. The authentic riwayah. May yurid Allahu bihi khairan yusib minhu. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends good for someone, he puts him into hardship and masayib. It's completely opposite. Once again, it is not that we are praying for the masayib, for the hardship. No, no, no. But they will come. So never ever have this Susan, this bad assumption of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never ever do this. Always have good assumption of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? He is the mawla of the believers. Kul, lay yusibana illa ma katab Allahu lana huwa mawlana wa ala Allahi fal yatawakkal al-mu'minun. Subhanallah. Believers are saying what? Nothing can fall on us. No musibah can come. Except what Allah has written for us. And who is Allah? He is our protecting friend. Wali. He is the wali of the believers. And in Allah, the believers should place their trust. Dear brothers and sisters, I just want to inshallah end with this dua. That whenever any calamity, any musibah happens, immediately we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We connect our heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen and we trust his plan.